<laughs> Are you encouraged yet this morning? Yes. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. My goodness. Last week, uh, we, we just I shared a little bit about operating in Revelation. And I just want to kind of springboard off of that uh, today and continue to talk a little bit about that, but trying to be really sensitive to what I feel like God's saying even this morning. So, so bear with me. Um, you know, every time there's, there's a major shift or a transition in our lives or there's something going on, I, I really do believe it's an opportunity for us to, to get a greater revelation of Jesus. Mm-hmm. It goes back to what Tana was just saying. Um, and about, like, I really feel like right now we need a, a, a different perspective, or I think she used the word understanding of the love uh, of God towards us. And, um, and I was thinking there as well as, as even as, as Phil was sharing the, 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 the thought around communion this morning is, you know, there's all those different groups of people looking at Jesus. And there's, there was a moment in time, there was an era, there's this there was something shifting in the world at that time. Jesus was hanging on the cross, probably the most important moment of, of history um, for all of us. But, but, but the difference was is only a select few had a revelation of who Jesus was in that moment. You know, I, and, and um, you, we, we've referenced this, this scripture off, often, and, and, I, and it's, it's really the foundation for this little mini series that I feel like God's speaking to us about revelation. But, you know, it's the prayer that Paul gave the church in Ephesians 1, 17. He said, I'm actually praying for you. I'm praying that you would get the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Why? To grow into the knowledge of Jesus. You see, now you have to understand something. That church already had a revelation of who Jesus was. They had already come into an understanding of who he was. But Paul was saying, I'm actually praying that there's another level of understanding. There's another level of of revelation that you have of Jesus. And so as we talk about revelation, as we think about what God's doing in this hour and what God's doing in the world around us and what he's doing in our own individual lives right now, do not miss the goal. The goal is the Lord is wanting, the Father is wanting to reveal His Son in a greater measure than He's ever done before. So yes, we have a perfect revelation of who Jesus is. But there is something, there's always more. There's always a a, a point to where our our spirit man overtakes our our soulish nature and our thoughts and and the the flesh and the world and all of these kinds of things where we get a greater revelation of who Jesus is. That's the goal. The the goal is Jesus. The, The goal is a revelation of Jesus. And we are moving towards that hour. We're moving towards that hour where we will actually see him come down with the, at the clouds of heaven, right? And we will actually see a new heaven and a new earth come down from heaven and, and be established here in, in a new earth. Why? Because Jesus will be revealed in the fullness of who he is. So when we talk about a movement, which is what we were talking about last week, we're talking about we're, we're, we're moving forward. And I just want to say, as even I feel like the Spirit of God was saying this morning, it takes revelation in order for us to move forward. Because again, if we don't, we get stuck in a rut. And it's not that we can't still be um, have an understanding of who God is. It doesn't mean that we can't be saved. It doesn't mean any of that. But if you if you're where God is, then there's constantly movement, and that constant movement comes with a continual revelation of who Jesus is. The other thing I just wanted to say real quick before we jump, jump in a little bit more was even as we were worshiping this morning and, and I loved like and pray the praise will be my song. Right. And, and um, how's the verse go? What's the one? This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And I had this picture in my head even as we started this morning and I got up and I just shared about like um, when God revealed his name, God revealed his nature to Moses, that was a point of revelation. And he was saying, you need to now know who I am in a different way than ever before because I'm doing something new. But what was it for? 
if you look back in the book of Exodus and you, and, you, and you read through all the fine print of what's going on, God says, I want to move my people out of where they are into me so that they can worship me there. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is not a time, and I know we as a community here are in that place, but for the greater church, it isn't a time to settle in and bunker in and wait. It's not that at all. It's a season of movement because when God begins to do something and move something, he reveals himself a little bit more because we have to have that revelation of who he is to be carried off into what he's doing next. Does that make sense? And so that's what God did in that moment for Moses. He revealed himself as Yahweh. I am that I am. And Moses was weak. He didn't have much. If you remember of anything, he tried to actually say, God, this job is for someone else. I don't have the words to say. I don't have the, the, the background. I don't have the credentials behind my name. I didn't go to that university. I don't have, I don't have what it takes. And God's whole point, again, I'm not reading through it this morning. It's all right there. But God says to him over and over and over, him, who, who, whose name are you invoking here? It's not mine. I'm actually wanting to reveal myself. So go in my name. And when you go in my name, I will reign victorious so that praise will be your song. Yes. So that victory will be the lifestyle that you live in. Does that make sense? And that's what God's calling us into. He's calling us all out from being Moses's. And listen, this is the thing, is Moses really didn't, he, he, does, he, he shifts throughout his journey with the Lord. And I want you to hear that this morning, because some of you go, man, I feel more like Moses in day one before I ever want to confront Pharaoh than, than I do where Moses is walking around really confident in who he is. But, but that's okay. I just want you to hear that. It's okay. Because God's got a revelatory process in place because, and this is my message for today, if if last week, uh, I think Phil, I never have titles for my messages, by the way. Like, it's really funny. If I'm preaching here, uh, if I'm preaching up at the journey, they always come up to me afterwards and like, what's the title of your sermon? I'm like, I don't title these things. It's not like a chapter in a book, you know? It's like... But, and that's okay to have chapters, or I mean titles for sermons. So. But, but it's always really good because it's helpful for me when I read. I'm like, oh, so Phil called it Operating in Revelation, right? So, but, but I guess I do kind of have a title. I actually wrote it down just a few minutes ago. But it's this. It's Ruling Out of Revelation. That's really what I just want to talk about for a few minutes. And then we're going to go witness the most beautiful thing ever and watch Katrina uh, uh, have a new birth. Into, the, into Jesus through water baptism and her obedience there. So glorious. And by the way, if anybody else this morning, if you're just like, I want my life to be right with Jesus this morning, and you haven't done that, you can do that this morning. We'd be happy to find another towel and, and let you just walk on down and commit your life to Jesus and get baptized. So that offer is extended to anyone in this room. So um, anyways, all that to say, uh, using, using the reference, uh, ruling out of revel, uh, Revelation, I'm sorry, using the reference of Moses again, God was revealing himself to Moses to rule in a generation in order to see captives set free. Okay? And, and, and that's the same kind of tools that the Lord wants us to operate in. You see, in Revelation chapter 1 and in other places in the Bible, Jesus is actually articulates us as a king, of, as kings and priests. Other translations say uh, they are a kingdom unto me and priests. So when God looks at us, he sees royalty. Okay, And don't forget this. This was God's original plan since Genesis chapter 1 when he created man and woman. And he said, I've got a task for you. It's to enjoy my presence, but here's the task. I want you to rule and have dominion, which means to reign over creation. I want you to reign with me. How cool is that? You know, I think all of us would, would, would love the idea of thinking we have crowns on and, and we have royal robes and we get to sit in these cool things. But, but literally, that's how Jesus sees us. He sees us that way. He sees us that way. Actually, one of the most profound uh, uh, um, encounters I had with the Lord, even in the last year or two, has been that. Like, I've seen the Lord as I've spent time with him. He showed me as a king dressed in royalty. It's because he's trying to get me, and I believe he's trying to get all of us to step into our identity and in who we are and how he sees us, a revelation of ourselves 
from heaven so that we'll begin to walk and operate in the world and rule and reign in the world like he's called us to. Because you see, we need a revelation of love, like Tana was saying, a deeper understanding and revelation of love so that we walk rightly. And we need that revelation. We need to have that in order to be able to rule rightly in this earth. You know, last week I referenced Matthew chapter 16, and I'm just going to go back there real quick because I want to show you this and how important it is if we have been called to rule and subdue the earth, and if Jesus, even in Revelation, one of the last revel, uh, revel, revelatory moments that we have written in the Bible was to John, and it was calling you and I that are in Christ kings in this world, then we need to know how to operate that kind of way. So in Matthew 16, 16? No, we don't have a saxophone up here today. Uh, in Matthew 16, uh, I used that chapter last week, and we just we talked about how it, the whole thing was centered around Revelation, right? But I want to go back real quick to verse uh, 17 and read that. So Matthew 16, verse 17 says this, And Jesus said to him, Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Go back to verse uh, 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Again, he's asking, what revelation do people have of me? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others Jeremiah, maybe one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, again, like we mentioned last week, under Revelation, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, there's that word, but my Father who is in heaven. I also say to you that, say that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Notice Jesus is speaking, just, he's invoking Peter's name over him. Kind of like going, I know who you are, and I know you by your name. Now, yes, Jesus has already been walking with him again, but I want you to hear that. I think it's important for us to hear that this morning, that the Lord wants us to know and become solidified in this season as he's building a house, as we've talked about, as he's doing something new in this new era that we are in, he wants us to have a firm foundation in who we are. And he wants you to know that you are seen and then that you are valued and he knows your name. He's blessing you, just as we started the service off with. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not re reveal this to you. I also say that you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Verse 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. So what's going on here? First, it's this. First, there is revelation happening, but then, as we mentioned last week, every movement of God, or the house of God, or the church, or if you will, the ecclesia is always built on the revelation of who Jesus is. Other scriptures that might resonate with you along that line is Jesus is the cornerstone. Okay? All right? He is the cornerstone. Everything is built upon him. But it's also built upon our understanding and our, 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 our knowing of who he is. Right? And so because Peter saw him rightly, Jesus then gave them a step forward, a movement that says, now that you understand who you are, you understand who I am, I want you to now know what I am building in this hour. Yeah. And he says, it's going to look different than it's ever looked before. It's not like the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's not just like a synagogue. It's not just like the tent of meeting. It's not just like all those other things. I'm about to give you some more revelation into what I want you to do on this earth. And he says this. He goes, I will build my church. Now, we've, we, I think we've mentioned this in here at time, but I'm going to take a moment just to revisit this for a second. But, but church there is not church how we think about it. Again, last week we were talking about what we believe God's doing here. And we said we don't want to play church. We don't think that God is just building a church. We feel like God has started something and this is just kind of what's happened. And we're not afraid to use the word church. It's in our Facebook name, 
church Newcastle church something I don't know whatever it is right we're not afraid to use that but our but we need a greater understanding we need a greater revelation of what the church is and is supposed to be us collectively and so a part of that is this understanding the Greek word used here for church is actually the ecclesia okay so many times you don't see like the first Presbyterian ecclesia of Newcastle or you don't see center 61 ecclesia you know we don't we don't use that word but this is a word that would have been used very commonly and very much understood in that day. So Jesus was actually taking something that was very much well-known in the culture around them and said, I'm going to build something like this. Okay. And what, so what was the ecclesia? The ecclesia, first and foremost, and this is the important part of ruling with revelation for us today, is that the ecclesia was first and foremost a ruling, governing body. Okay. And that, that shifts our perspective immediately. When we think about coming to church on a Sunday morning, right? All right, we could just stop right there. Like, what if, you, if we understood when we drove to Newcastle or walked down the road to this little center at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings and we said, actually, we're going to, the Congress is a, is a journey. Parliament is now in session. Because really, that's what Jesus is invoking here. Because he's saying to them, hey, don't forget what I'm trying to do in this earth. I have a different kingdom. I have a different nation that I'm actually building and birthing in the midst of the nations of the world. And it's going to be a people that are royal. It's going to be a people that are tied to my father through me. It's going to be a people that operates out of revelation, like we've talked about, operates out of my spirit, out of a wisdom of spirit and revelation, not out of their own power and their own mind. They're not just going to put the best business practices in the world and apply them to the church, though that could be helpful maybe at some times, but they're going to operate from a different level of government, a different level of understanding, and in so doing, see the love of God manifested in the world around them because that was his original idea back in Genesis 1 and that's going to be the ultimate conclusion in Revelation 21 when he comes and establishes his reign and rule and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be glorious and it's going to be what our hearts long for it's the foretaste of what we get to taste in intimacy with Jesus or as we worship around him when the presence of God comes upon us. It's the foretaste of what actually all of life as we know it will be like. And he says, that's what I want to build. So what does it look like for us to be an ecclesia? What does it look like for us to be a ruling, governing body? Well, back in the day, real quickly, is the ecclesia... What, what would happen is there was these people called apostles, and it wasn't a word that Jesus came up with, but, but there was apostles who were people from the Roman government who had the authority and backing of Caesar, and they were sent out to all the conquered territories that Rome had, and then in that place they would establish an ecclesia. They would establish a ruling body of people that would begin to legislate and decree the orders of the king uh, or of Caesar back in Rome. So he would send, which is what apostles mean, the sent ones. They were sent out like ambassadors carrying the, the sovereignty of that king and that kingdom to a location and begin to legislate and say that same kingdom that's over there now has roots here. And the gates of Hades will not overpower it. That's the kingdom that we're at war with. Jesus is saying to the church, he goes, I want to give I want you to be my ruling class on earth to be able to push back the works of darkness, to establish my kingdom here in order to see the gates of hell or Hades be overpowered. So therefore, we are a governing, even warring body. One of, the, one of the functions of a government is to initiate and give the authority to release times of war. Neil started that off this morning. And again, it, it, you know, when we think about war, it's like we're not, you know, we're not doing this and arming ourselves with guns. And that. No, 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 no. But what we are doing 
is we are positioning ourselves to have a revelatory knowledge of going, well, Jesus, if you've told me that I'm a king, that I'm a warrior, and that we are a ruling body, and this ruling body isn't here just to take over. It, it's here to actually love just like Jesus loved and see the transformative power of the Holy Spirit come and take root in individuals. And when it takes roots in individuals, it then takes roots in families. And when it takes roots in families, it then begins to change generational lines. And when it begins to change generational lines, then whole regions begin to be impacted. Amen. Businesses begin to be impacted. The decisions that are made even in our towns and in our communities are impacted because we have a mindset and a revelation of what of the goodness of who Jesus is, how he is ruling, and then we release what he's saying yeah. because we are an apostolic people. We're releasing what he's saying into the world around us. Yes. Now, do you remember last week? Now, I, I went back and listened to myself. I rarely do that. But, but it's because I didn't plan most of what I said last week. So I was going back listening just this morning going, God, what did you say last week? Or what did I, what came out of my mouth? What did you say? But one of the things that, that was said was like, if we see the gates of hell prevailing in and around our own lives or in and around the lives of our communities around us, it means that we are operating in the revelation knowledge and decreeing and moving forward or advancing or warring the way in which Jesus is doing it. Because he said right here, I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail. So if we see the gates of hell prevailing, we're not operating under the revelation that Jesus just said, you have to have of who I am in order to move forward to see the gates of hell be demolished. And we can apply that to our individual lives. So that's why I said like even at the beginning when we say we need to declare the name of the Lord, we need to invoke the name of the Lord over our lives. It's because in, in, in the Lord, when we understand who Jesus is, that he's a promise keeper, that he's faithful, that he's everything, that all of the different names biblically that we read about him are true in our lives. And we begin to operate in faith out of his nature, not out of our own power and our own might or our own, our own good ideas. Then we begin to see that revelation take fruit or take uh, um, root, sorry, in the world around us. And we actually see then the gates of hell begin to fall. So if you aren't, go back to the word of God. Go back to the word of God and say, Jesus, show me who you are. Pray the prayer that we pray. It's as simple as that. God, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so I can grow in the knowledge of Jesus, so I can have a revelation of him, so that the gates of hell will fall around me. And just as a reminder, the gates in, in biblical language are, are symbolic of a places of authority. That's where judges would sit. That's where some legislative power would sit at the gates of cities. And they would have their discussions and vote on things at the gates. So oftentimes the ecclesia would meet at the gates. They would, they would surround themselves around those areas. And then so that when people are coming in and coming out, they would hear the decrees of this is the culture of this region. And my question is, when we look at the world around us, what are the decrees? What are the proclamations? What are the things that the world around us is hearing over and over and over? Are they hearing any kind of revelation of truth? Are they hearing any kind of revelation of Jesus? Because he is the truth. When we get that understanding, when we understand who he is, we begin to war. We begin to become the ecclesia. And, and I just want to say, like, that's our heart here. You know, we've been meeting for some time here now. I guess it's Dave mentioned it's been a year. Or where'd Dave go? Is he still here? Oh, he's back with the kiddos. But we were praying on Tuesday night. Is that what it was? And, and Dave said it's been a year since we met in the tent uh, out at Northfield, and we started just worshiping out there. And so, I mean, there was meetings going on before that. But, but when we kind of just started meeting on our own. And so, actually, I can't totally forget where I was going with all that. Oh, we've been meeting for some time. And so, yeah, yeah. And so, like, we're trying to go, okay, God, so what are you doing here? And I just, wanna, I just want you to know that it's important that as we move forward as a body, as, as this house moves forward, like, this is our goal, is to biblically align ourselves with the revelation of Jesus and the revelation of the ecclesia and how to be that in, in the world around us today. Does that make sense? And that's why I said last week we're not interested in playing church. 
Like everybody can go and just do church and that's fine and, and, and whatever, but, but we're, we're, we're moving. We want to stay in step with him. Um, you know, honestly, I think that's okay for today. I, I really have a whole lot more uh, again, but that, I can save that till next week. <laughs> um, here's the last thing I want to say is this. I'll just do this. I'll finish up with this. Um, you know, oftentimes, and this is not uncommon, it's very normal, when the Lord begins speaking, if, if you've ever been one that shares up here or, 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 or if you ever communicated or pray, I mean, 90% of the time, what the Lord is leading the leaders through, you know, personally is what he ends up leading the body through collectively. It's very, very normal, right? Because again, if the leaders are, are apostolic in nature, they need to be hearing what Jesus is saying to them, and then they need to decree it out, right, to the rest of the people so that they're hearing what God is saying. And then, now let me hear, hear you say this. That's not to diminish every single one of us are kings and priests, okay? And that's another difference about what God is building here. We believe that every single one of you are carrying the word of the Lord in you, are carrying the revelation of God within you. It's not about who's up here, okay? It's about launching us all out, because another thing that the Holy Spirit said last week is every single one of you are in here are key in order for in, in, in the days of head to see this nation, to see this region, to see your own families changed and shifted for the glory of Jesus. But again, I just want to show you this. And how will it be done? Isaiah 11. And, and the Lord spoke this to me a while ago. I know I've shared it in here before. It just says this. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. And a branch from his roots will bear fruit. That's Jesus. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And he, Jesus, will delight in the fear of the Lord. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make decision, decisions by what his ears hear. <coughs> But with righteousness, he judges the poor and decides with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Also, righteousness will be the belt about his loins and faithfulness, the belt around his waist. This is the same spirit that rested upon Jesus that the father is releasing to us to walk with a, a, a level of revelation that incorporates wisdom, understanding, counsel, strength, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And did you catch verse three? Because of that spirit, Jesus would not judge or rule, if you will, by what his eyes see, nor make decisions by what his ears hear. All that to say this, Jesus operated under the Holy Spirit a spirit of revelation. And he was like what John chapter three said. Those that are born of, of the water and of the spirit are like the wind. You don't hear where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. And so are those who are born of the wind. They move according to the rhythm and the step of the spirit of God in their life. Okay. And then they, they begin to see things that the rest of the world can't see. They begin to make decisions, not based upon what their physical ears hear and their physical minds hear, but about what they hear because they're an intimate, loving relationship with the God of heaven who wants the people's song and not just the people in this room, but our family, our friends to be able to sing with us one day. Ah, praise. It's, it's, it's my song. It's, it's worship. It's what I was created for is to release the worship of Jesus on earth as it is in heaven. Pray with me. Father, thank you so much for your uh, continual revelation in this hour of what you're doing here. And God, again, I just, I boldly and faithfully ask once again for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to fall upon us. God, we want to be your ecclesia. We want to be, God, uh, everything that you've called us to be. And God, it's one thing for us just to sit around and go, oh, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. 
But God, that's the exact opposite of what you've called us to be. Not to sit around and go, oh, life's hard. I hate this situation. You called us to actually stand up and decree the power of heaven, the truth of heaven, the love of heaven, to bear fruit that is consistent with the spirit of wisdom and revelation, to, to have the confidence and the boldness of a lion, but walk in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. So God, in this hour, form us and make us into the kinds of people that Jesus longs for us to be, that he died for us to be, that he bled for us to be. And God, I ask that you would give us a a greater revelation on how to begin to war like never before, how to govern like never before. We want to do it for you, Jesus. We want to do it for you. We want to see you high and lifted up. So Jesus, we celebrate what you are doing. Oh man, it's amazing. We love it. We absolutely love what you're doing with our little house right now. We love what you're doing right here. And God, we just lay our lives down again. And we just humble ourselves before you, Jesus. We humble ourselves and just say, Jesus, our focus is you. We believe that you are the son, that you are Christ that you are the anointed one of God, that you are the son of the living God. That's what we build our lives around. But God, we look at a world around us that is actually waiting on us. So God, remove us from the ruts once again. Move us forward in in the power of your might and allow us to see Jesus rightly in this hour today. Give us a revelation of your love. Strengthen us in our inner man so we would know the breadth, the width, the length, and the height of the love that you have for us. And move us forward. And God, we just want to celebrate you. We celebrate Katrina this morning and this hour, God. For one who's being, uh, God, born of the Spirit, born through water this morning. Her heart's already yours. She's been following you and seeking you all these hours and she's just walking forward in obedience this morning. So we just celebrate. We welcome her into the ecclesia. God, I pray that you would baptize her in the Holy Spirit, that you would give her power to bear witness, power to govern, power to rule. God, power to love. God, so God, I just pray that you would break off everything even right now. Break off anything that would put her in a rut. Yes, in Jesus. Because I know that's her heart. And so God, when she goes under the water today, may everything of her past be left there. And she's raised to walk in newness of life with you. So Jesus, keep it up. And keep us up. Keep us up, God. Because we know that we are the greatest revelation of Jesus in this hour to the world around us. Help us to see ourselves rightly. Help us to stand like we've never stood before. God, and help us to use the treasure that you've already given us to rule and reign in this earth. In Jesus' name, amen.